Hey guys, we're going to be building a GraphQL server from scratch today with Redis. Now we're going to be using a couple different tools to help us out with this. And the first is Babel. Babel is going to allow us to use nice ES6 syntax while we're coding it. We're also going to be using something called NoDemon, which is a development server that will automatically reload when you make changes in your file. So you don't have to come over to your command line and restart the server yourself. For the server itself, we're going to be using Express and something called Apollo Server to help us out with the GraphQL portion. And we're also, of course, going to be using Redis to actually make, we're going to use Node Redis to make the connection to the Redis database. Now for this, I'm going to assume you have Redis installed on your computer, but other than that, we're going totally from a blank directory from scratch. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing we're going to be configuring is Babel. So to configure Babel, we're going to install two things. First, this preset env and also stage three. So this is going to give us the basics and then stage three will give us async await and also spread of objects, which is very nice. So we're going to come over here. I just have a blank folder, um, nothing inside of it. I'm going to say npm init to start a project off. Um, I'm just going to keep all the defaults and then what I'm going to do is go ahead and get started. I'm gonna use yarn to install these. You don't have to, you can use npm if you want to, uh, as long as you do them as dev dependencies. So we're also gonna download no daemon while we're here, might as well. Um, so Babel CLI, this will allow us to use Babel node. And then the two I just was talking about. So Babel preset env and Babel preset stage three. And then go ahead and let those run. And then when those are finished, what we will have is a .babelrc file. And what we want to do in there is just specify that we're using env and stage three. So here I have the folder open in Visual Studio Code, and I'm just going to create, I'm going to open it up, create a new one called .babelrc. And then here, I'm just going to say presets, oops presets and we're going to say env and stage 3 and those are the two we just downloaded so that's just telling Babel node what we're using and now we're going to go to package.json over here and you just notice how in our scripts we only have test we're going to add a start command so start and to start up our server we want to call node daemon and we want to exec Babel node and we're going to create an index.js file that's going to be where our server is at. So Babel node is going to call our index.js. So we're just telling no daemon to call Babel node, which then calls index.js. Now Babel CLI downloaded Babel node for us, so that's how we're able to use that. Okay, let's go ahead and create an index.js file. Here is where we're going to actually put our server. And for our server, what we're going to be using is Apollo data. And so this is called the Apollo Server Express. We can go ahead and copy this in and paste it. So we need to go ahead and install the dependencies for this. So um, Express Body Parser and Apollo Server Express. But first, let's clean this up. I'm going to use const instead of var. I'm also going to put this on port, I think I'm going to put this on port 8080. 80. You can put on whatever port you want to. And then we actually need to create a GraphQL schema for this as well. But first, let's go ahead and install these. So here's a terminal over here. We're going to go, these are regular dependencies we're adding. So we also need GraphQL. Um, Apollo Server Express was, I believe, the name of it. Yep, Server Express, Body Parser, and Express. Okay. So now that we have that, our server is good. The next thing we want to do is to do the schema. So for generating a schema, we're going to do something like this, where we just basically have uh, some string, and that's going to be our schema. And then we will write resolvers like this, and then we mash them together by using this make executable schema. So we need to install GraphQL tools um, to help us with that. So I'm going to say yarn add GraphQL tools to our project as well. And then we can copy and paste this into our project right here. 
Okay. And so these we need to go ahead and create some and import type defs from schema and import resolvers from dot slash resolvers. Okay, so we need to add both of these two files now. So let's first do schema.js. And here we're just going to export default a uh, string. And now our string here, I'm going to just start this off with a basic query to make sure we set everything up okay. So I'm going to say hello, which returns a string. And then I can also do the resolver. So resolvers.js. And here your resolver is just going to be an object. And we have a query type. And our query type, this is an object, our query type, it has a hello in it. And it returns a string, so we can just return hi. And there's one last thing we need to do to test this guy out and make sure we have everything good is to do set up a graphical endpoint. So this is something that comes with our server. It's called Graphical Express. Um, we just say app.use, whatever endpoint we want. I'm going to say graphical. Um, and then we just say graphical express. And then here you can pass in um, a couple of different parameters. The one we care about is the endpoint URL. So endpoint URL. And this is just where your GraphQL is set up. So our GraphQL endpoint is slash GraphQL, so we're going to put that here. Okay. So now if I start up the server and I go to localhost 8080 slash graphical, we should be able to run a query. So I'm going to go ahead and say npm start, which is going to start up no daemon in Babel node. Um, looks like there's no errors. Everything up. Oh, looks like we have one. Oh, we forgot to change that. So I called this schema here, and then here we have a different name. So I just need to change that. All right. So let's see. So notice how the app crashed. Um, the nice thing about no daemon, it recognized that I saved it, and what it does is it tries to restart the server. So it's currently restarting right now, and it looks like it worked okay, or else we'd see an error. So if I come over here to localhost 8080 slash graphical, we can see if we did everything right, we should see graphical pop up, and we do. So now what we can try is the query that we created. I can say hello, and we should see hi pop up. Nice. So this is our GraphQL server. It's all set up. The last thing we want to do is set up Redis. So now to do that, we're going to be using this library right here called Node Redis. So the first thing we're going to do is install it. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to open up a new tab in my terminal. So I have the server still running here. And over here I have a new um, tab. And I'm going to just say yarn add Redis to install it. And now what we can do is we can come over here and just import it. So import Redis from Redis, and we can start using it. Now we're going to do a simple example similar to this. We can copy this guy. And I'm just going to do this above the uh, app right here. This is just initiating the client. I'm going to use the default server here. I'm going to say const. And actually, we don't need that because I'm going to say const here because we're importing Redis up here. We don't, we're not have, to re, we don't have to re import it with require. Um, here, we can change this to an arrow function. And we're going to console log if we get any errors. Here, this is actually you know, the actual meat of the thing, meat of R. So these are actually Redis commands right here. So we don't need to put them here where we want to put these in, is in our resolvers. So what you can do is you can put a parameter here called context. And the context will get past all your resolvers. So notice how in Redis over here it says client.set, client.hset. So you want to be able to access the client in your resolvers so you can call these things. So the way you do that is you pass it through your context. So I'm going to pass client in. And now in my resolvers, I can actually access this. But first, let's set up our schema to support. Uh, now that we have Redis, I'm going to do a little different setup. So we have a query. I also want a mutation. So I'm going to call this mutation set, which it takes a key, which is a string. Um, and I'm going to make it a non-null. 
and then I'll say the value, which is also a string, and it returns a Boolean of whether or not we set this correctly. And then our query, I'm just gonna call get, you pass a key, and then you get the value, which could be a string, which is going to be a string actually. Okay, so you can set stuff with our mutation and then you can get it with the query. So in our resolvers, we can say, so that's gonna be our query there. Let's do our mutation first, because the query we're gonna have to do a little different setup and I'll show you why in a second. So set, this has a couple different arguments. The first is parent, the next is arguments. Um, arguments is gonna be key and value. So what we can actually do is expand that and say key and value, so we can use that. The third is that context that we pass in here. So what I can actually do is actually just grab the client um, and that's all we need. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, do a try catch, try catch. So I'm gonna just try to say client.set um, key value. And I'm gonna make this an async function. So we're gonna await that and if it if we didn't get any errors we're gonna return true otherwise there was an error we can console log see what happened and return false we did not set it okay so that's our set the next one is git so git parent um, again we are only passing a key for the argument so we can just expand for key and the client is here as well and so here what I'm gonna do is very similar right so try Oops. Catch. And I want to say return client dot get key right. Um, otherwise return null. So if there is a problem, um, we're not able to get it for some reason, we want to return null saying there is no key, right? But this actually won't work. And the reason for that is this client dot get here, it actually only supports callbacks and not promises. So if we come over here we can see how they're doing it is, this is one example, they have a function here that they pass in which is to grab it. But what we can do is we can actually pass in um, Bluebird, which is a promise library, and then you can do promises. And then we can do something called git async, which will work. So instead of doing git, we're gonna call git async here, and we need to install Bluebird. So I'm gonna come over here and say yarn.add Bluebird, and then all we're gonna do is import Bluebird and call these two things. So this is gonna happen over here. So my client right here, I'm just gonna basically add Bluebird so that way Redis uses Bluebird, so promises work. So import Bluebird from Bluebird. All right, so now in our resolver up here, we try to get this key. If we don't get it, we return null. All right, otherwise we just return what we did in our set. So let's give this a try. Our server should have automatically restarted. Now you'll notice uh, the server restarted and Redis is having connection errors. And the reason for that is I haven't started Redis. So I just downloaded Redis from using the command line. I have the command line uh, tools. So I can just run Redis server to start that up. Um, now we have it running. You should get this little thing. It said ready to accept connections. And you should see this no longer is spitting out errors. So now I can come over here, this is graphical. I can restart it and I'm just gonna say git and I'm gonna say my name. So this should return null because we haven't set any keys, right? And sure enough, it does. Now let's try setting something with the mutation. So mutation set key is gonna be my name and the value is gonna be Ben. So hit run, set is true, so it's set correctly. And now I can do git and I can say Ben. Oops, the key is my name. We should get Ben back. And bam, we get Ben back. So awesome. So that is it for this video, guys. That's how you set up Redis with GraphQL. Now you're not limited to this. I just showed you a git and set example. There's plenty of other things you can do with Redis and to set up your schema and get it more advanced and actually use Redis with other databases as well. So plenty of stuff you can do from here that I recommend trying out. Um, 
but this is a nice setup, a nice um, getting you started. So thank you guys for watching and the code will be up on GitHub.